So hey, if your green paint mixtures start looking like pea green soup, and your nice, exciting green landscape paintings are starting to look like bad St. Patty's Day parties, stay tuned. This is going to help you take your paintings to the next level, I promise. I'm going to cover two super helpful color theory tips that will help your plein air landscape greens achieve depth and vibrancy. Make sure to stay tuned to the end. I will have a power tip for you, and it's going to be a good one. All right, let's paint. Okay, lean in close with me here for a minute before we put some paint on the canvas with tip number one, simultaneous contrast. And if you read some color theory books, it essentially states this, that for any given color, the eye simultaneously requires the complementary color and the eye generates it spontaneously if it's not present. Isn't that so weird, but so crucial? Basically, what simultaneous contrast says is that if you stare long enough at this gray mixture in the middle, you will start seeing the complementary color of green in it. You'll start seeing red. This, this gray mixture will start turning to a reddish gray uh, color because the eye requires it. Isn't that so weird? And if you, you know, likewise, if you look at this uh, gray puddle right here, surrounded by cad red, if you stare long enough at it, it will start turning to a green color because your eye wants to see the complementary color next to the other. That is a crucial point. You can't see it on camera, I don't think. You can't photograph it. It's an optical sensation in the eye of the beholder. It's something that happens in your brain and in your eye. And it's just, it produces an exciting visual effect. And so this is important to plein air landscape painting, important to your greens, important to color mixing. And so I don't think you can see it, you know, you can kind of stare at this in video and see if it works, but <laughs> that is a very important point. And we can capitalize on that optical visual effect in our plein air landscape paintings, okay? And incidentally, the Impressionists were the first one, uh, at least the most popular ones, to implement this into plein air landscape painting. You know, for example, look at Monet, look at his shadows. I mean, did he ever make black shadows? He always had, you know, violets, and he always had reds in his shadows, complementary of what he was painting. So what we want to do is we want to try to put these colors in our plein air landscape painting side by side, the reds and the greens. You know, maybe not necessarily the pure color beside it, maybe not pure cad red and pure green, but uh, something on the color wheel close to those complementaries. So here's what we have to do. In our plein air landscape paintings, we have to give the viewer's eye what it wants. It wants an optical sensation. So why not give it? Let's try to take advantage of this, especially in the shadows today, and see if this works. Incidentally, the, the brighter and more luminous the color surrounding the gray, the more you experience this optical sensation. So try this yourself in your studio at home. And really quickly, here is the second part B point under simultaneous contrast. Let's just zoom in and look real quick and see, see the pop that this red had when it is surrounded by its complementary green? There's just a lot of pop, a lot of contrast here, a lot of interest. Whereas when red is, cad red is surrounded by orange, it, uh, it's, it's almost lifeless. It's amazing the difference, you know, if you kind of zoom in and just look, or look at your own palette, do this experiment yourself in your studio at home. This information should be valuable and used by us in our plein air landscape paintings, and that's what I plan to do today. What we want to try to do in this painting is take advantage of contrast, contrast of red and green, for example, primarily what we're talking about here because we're painting greens, but contrast of color and contrast of temperature. So warms and cools and reds and greens and contrast creates interest and interest creates emotion and when you create emotion you make a connection with the viewer and you have a beautiful painting and you have much more of an impact on the people who are looking at your painting so contrast is probably the thing that i have on my mind the most when i'm plein air painting i'm always looking for ways to create contrast changes in color and changes in uh, temperature are two of my favorite but there are three or four others as well okay as we get started with the painting here you know where i always start at my paintings is with my darkest dark and that's something that you want to kind of put in in the drawing stage if you can along with some hint of your shadows and that's the ultimate way to start your painting because it keys your painting so that you can read all the other colors properly this is just kind of a, a dead uh, tree limb that fell beneath this this gorgeous tree in front of me here just can't wait to paint it okay I know you want to get painting but point number two here is going to require us to look at some color mixing very very important hang with me here and we will get this on the canvas as soon as we can. But uh, point number two is, is going to take us most of the painting here. It's to see and mix for atmospheric curtains or veils. So atmospheric curtains or veils. If you have not heard me talk about that before, um, what I mean by that is you should look at your plein air landscape in terms of having three atmospheric veils or atmospheric curtains. I like to envision them as clear glass windows 
kind of going from top to bottom in the landscape. So if you look at the foreground here, you know, that's your closest foreground atmosphere curtain. And everything in that curtain is going to be your darkest dark, your darkest value. It's going to have your coldest and warmest temperatures, your boldest colors, the most contrast, the hardest edges. And then when you look out into the middle ground, um, that's going to be your second atmosphere curtain. It's like you're looking through a couple panes of windows. There's going to be some atmosphere between you and the objects that you're painting. So those belong to the midtones, all of your middle tones. And so you want to mix and see colors for that atmosphere curtain, the midground. And essentially what that means is just what it sounds like. It's all your middle, your middle colors and values. It's not too dark, it's not too light. And then lastly, your background. And then in your background of your painting is where you're going to have your lightest values, your coolest temperatures to show atmospheric perspective, blurred lines, lost and found edges, and stuff like that. So that's how I think of my land, plein air landscapes as having three atmospheric curtains, foreground, middle ground, and background. I'm going to show you on my palette how I do it. And I don't normally paint this way, but I'm going to mix up the colors for the foreground. I'm going to paint them. And I'm going to mix up the colors for the middle ground and paint them and the colors for the background and paint those for you. So starting with this shadow here in front of me in the meadow, it's a very cool, cool color. So I've got titanium white. I've got some cerulean blue. And we'll put a little bit of... Uh, cad yellow light in there as well it's going to need some red i want to put some permanent rose in there and a little more cerulean blue it's got a stronger value and just kind of make it a cool a cool green color all right the other thing we have in the foreground we have light and shadow which is so beautiful we have that that meadow that's all lit up here and it's going to even be more contrast as the afternoon progresses here so cad yellow medium you know, maybe with a little bit of yellow ochre in there. Maybe a little permanent rose, a little red to offset it. And then some ultramarine blue. Not, eh, not too much, just a little bit ultramarine blue. Kind of like a hay field color. So that's that color right there. I think we'll punch it even more with a little bit of cad yellow and some orange. Some cad yellow medium and some cad yellow orange. There we go. And then the other color that we see in the foreground here uh, other than my darkest dark, is that massive big tree right in front of me. That's about 40, 50 yards to my right. Let's just take a look at it. It's just this massive tree with beautiful shadows. So that's what I'm mixing for right now. And it's partly in light and it's partly in shadow. I'm going to go with uh, ultramarine blue. It's a fairly dark value. I'm going to get rid of this titanium white. Not sure why I put that there. So ultramarine blue. And then some cad red. And then cad yellow. It needs some alizarin crimson. You can see I'm way off base, but I'm, I've got the right colors in there. I just haven't found the right recipe yet here. Okay, so a little more ultramarine blue, even phthalo blue, very cool color. Cerulean blue. I'm just going to put all my cool blues in there and just really cool it up as best I can. Okay, that should do it. So those are my colors for the foreground. So I'm going to think and mix in terms of my foreground colors and go ahead and put those on the canvas. Let's see what it looks like. Here we go. Oh, heck, shoot. Let's start with this, this shadow color here in the meadow. Let's get it in. Use maybe a little more cad red in there. The, the light is shining brilliantly on my canvas. I, I normally face my easel and my palette into the sun. But I'm not doing that so that you can so that you can see what I'm painting, but it's just very difficult. The sun is brilliant, it's bright, it's shifting. So I hope you can see. So there's that kind of cool shadow color that's coming from the big trees that are all surrounding me here. So we got that in, just block it in quick. Really just thinking in terms of abstract shapes. Right color, right value, right temperature in the right place. Let's put the, the big tree color in here. Just this beautiful, massive tree, and it's darker, it's darker value. So remember what I'm saying here, the foreground atmospheric veil or curtain, it's going to have your darkest and most brilliant colors. So that's where those belong. And it's partly in light, partly in shadow. So I just have to be aware of that as, as things progress here. And next, let's go for the, uh, just for the meadow color here in the foreground. 
which is that beautiful kind of hay hay field color it's changing color before me faster than I can mix it's turning some beautiful beautiful sunset colors starting to appear in the mountains already Okay, so I just you can see how quickly I go. I'm not drawing every blade of grass, that's for sure. <laughs> and I know it looks like it. It's just not my style. It's Russian Impressionism. So it's going to be a little impressionistic until we get to the end, you know? Got a part of my darkest dark. And that'll be in the foreground veil as well, you know? There's a bunch of them sticking up. just to give me a road map so I know what I'm doing, that's all. Okay, good, so really what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to fill up the canvas as quickly as I can. That's really what I'm trying to do. And I forgot to mix for it, but um, there's that second tree, I almost forgot about it. It's about 40, 50 yards beyond this one, so it's 100 yards from me. So I'm not gonna make the shadows as dark, it's mostly in light at this point. But if you remember, it was it was that tree right there. I'm going to go into some cobalt blue. Okay, so that's that's just the the shadow of that tree right there. And we'll make some more sense of this as the painting goes on. Okay, let's talk about the second atmospheric veil or curtain, the middle ground. Well, hey, if we haven't met yet, by the way, I'm Terry, and uh, I'm with Learning Plain Air. My passion is plain air painting and trying to put God's beauty down on canvas. If you haven't subscribed yet, and this is your jam, we'd love to have you. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button right now. And if you're getting value out of this video so far, hit the thumbs up like button. It helps spread the word for this channel. YouTube likes it so that it can get to other people on YouTube. All right, let's get back to painting. All right, so we're going to mix for atmosphere curtain number two, and I'll try to get out of the way so you don't see shadows on the palette, but I've got three piles of titanium white, and we're going to mix for the that foothill that is coming across from left to right in the middle ground of the painting, so it'll have middle values and tones. I'm going to go with, uh, let's see, first off here, we'll make a nice kind of reddish green color with some ultramarine blue, a little bit of cad red, a little yellow ochre. Let's get a little more blue in there. Okay, it just needs to lean on the green side more, so I'll add a little bit more cad yellow medium to that. Okay, so what we got here is a few colors for the middle ground, middle values, middle colors, not too dark, not too light. So here I've got a mixture that's tending on the green side, a greenish gray, some ultramarine blue in it, some cad yellow. It's in full sunshine. So maybe I'll warm that up just a little bit and take some yellow ochre in there as well. Yellow ochre is kind of a good color to use for your greens in the middle ground. It kind of has that airy, distant feel to it. Mix that with a little ultramarine blue and you have a very, very neat looking middle ground green color. Love it. Okay, so we'll keep that there. And then there's kind of that sand dune color out there that's just a mix of some yellow ochre, some titanium white. We'll put a little, uh, it's in full sunshine, a little cad yellow light in there as well. So it's just a bright kind of sand dune color. Maybe a little cad orange in there. Nice, yes, I like it. And then that shadow color of the trees out there, there's shadows in those trees out there. So I've got some permanent rose, ultramarine blue, in there, a little cad red. So let's go up to the canvas and put those colors in, middle ground. For this foothill forest coming down here, and it kind of trails up over here, behind these trees, not really visible over here, but we'll put colors of it right there. Okay, just using real thin paint to get it blocked in. Going quickly.
right there and then you've got that beautiful like sand dune color it's really weird like right there you know that kind of comes down just use a palette knife for this just to have some fun kind of right here you know coming down in various spots it's a beautiful color it's a middle value middle color so I'm not going to get too crazy with it and go too bright with it or anything then you know sprinkled in there in those sand dunes are some kind of just just general shapes of those conifer trees coming down from the mountain don't go crazy with it and don't do it too uniform or predictable just kind of spread them out break the pattern up a little bit is what I'm trying to say break the pattern up and there that gives a little more realistic feel to it right there and then lastly those trees are producing some shadows it's it's in the middle ground so again there's going to be some more blurred lines lost and found edges but that color this purple color that we mixed up purple gray is out there and it's very beautiful right in there just kind of surrounding these trees and we'll get on to the uh the third veil here in a minute but that should do it don't want to overdo it and let's get that piece in there with the third veil okay let's mix up for for that uh, kind of background mountain it's it's a it's green i purposely picked this this view because everything's green and we've got multiple layers of green so this is a green color but there's atmosphere so i need to put a little violet in there because i look i don't look at the piece i look beside it and i look at the colors neighboring to see what that color is right there and dial that in that's how i do that so let's go into titanium white and let's go with a little cobalt blue permanent rose or cad red however you like to make your violet gray color because that's kind of what it is violet gray color a little ultramarine blue i'm gonna put a little yellow ochre in there permanent rose just searching testing playing it needs to be more cobalt blue and then I'm going to put the complementary of violet orange in there, like we were talking about earlier. To kind of, you want to do that in your, your third veil, your third atmospheric window, atmospheric curtain. Those need to be the values that are grayed down and cooler, okay, lighter in value. And then I'm going to reach into one of my green mixtures, just any one, and put that green in there, in that violet mixture that I had. And just put that on there. And that's pretty close. So we'll just get this guy in here. This is in the, uh, the third atmospheric curtain, if you will. And this guy's kind of crucial to, to help you read all the other colors. So we'll get that in, just a mixture of some cerulean blue, titanium white, a little bit of a little bit of ultramarine blue and then some red there's always a little bit of red or purple or violet in the sky as you as you know and it's just a weird sky today here in colorado we're getting a lot of the the uh, new mexico wildfire smoke that's blowing into the state unfortunately so not that great for for plein air painters you know we can show what are called sky holes in these trees right here just little sky holes here and there in the leaves just to kind of nothing too serious just to denote the sky behind the trees all right let's move on to the next one and then what we can do is just look for opportunities for simultaneous contrast in the shadows next that's what i plan on doing next so let's just get that mountain color in It's hard, you know, I shouldn't have my canvas like this in full sunlight because it's difficult to read the colors. They, I paint darker when it's, when it's in the uh, sun like that, and I shouldn't do that, but I want you to be able to see. It's more important that you kind of learn your, the points here than me make a, try to make a masterpiece or something. So this is, this is for you. 
Okay. That's okay, so what we did here in this third atmosphere curtain, we got that mountain kind of blocked in, a little bit of a violet, grayish color. These kinds of colors, you know, they have to be in the background furthest from you. They have to be a very light value and very cool in temperature. Now what we can do is just kind of go into each of these atmosphere curtains now that the canvas is all covered up and really just start to refine and work from big to small, work smaller pieces within the bigger pieces. So that's what we can do. And you know, my painting style, it's gonna look messy, you know, until the very end. And then at the very end, it still looks messy. <laughs> um, but yeah, you get my point, it's, it's Russian Impressionism. Like I always say, can't repeat it enough really, is, is I'm more concerned with an emotion, creating contrast and interest, than I am with, with anything else, really. And so I do that primarily through color and value changes. I'm a colorist, I like, but it is important to use neutral grays so that those colors can really be set up to pop. Here I'm just kind of working on these trees on the ridge a little bit, just defining, giving some shape so that it makes just a little more sense. These ones here, a little more color on them, a little more orange, catching full sunlight right here. On this piece right here, this beautiful mountain back here, it's called Buckhorn Mountain. The locals call it Storm King Mountain. There's, there's rock, you know, like you would see in a, in a Western movie, John Wayne movie. They filmed some John Wayne films around here. True Grit was one movie that they filmed near here. Locals kind of know what it looks like. But I just want to kind of show, show hints of that back there to define that piece just a little bit, but nothing too crazy. And then let's get into this mess right here and see if we can kind of fix that a little bit for you. <laughs> okay, one thing we can do, there's a, a super cool piece of uh, some bushes and shrubs right in front of here that uh, it's just really this beautiful, cool color. Just love it. Oh man, it's gorgeous. And that's just a nice piece that we can show right there. Putting the right color, value, and temperature in the right place. And it's in the foreground. So what we can start doing is keeping that simultaneous contrast in mind. Okay, so in that situation, we've got some greens. What I can maybe do is dip into some alizarin crimson and in the shadow parts of those, put some violet or some red colors to give the viewer's eye what it wants, a simultaneous color. Doesn't have to be cad red, the opposing color of green, it, it, but it can be some, some version of that on the color wheel. There, I just used a little bit of a lizard crimson. And to me, that nicely satisfies uh, that piece right there when we're talking about simultaneous contrast. And I could even just dip into some cad red. I'm not gonna go too strong, but just just a little bit right there, just hints of it. And then just go back and blend, go over it. So it doesn't stand out so much, but it's still there. You know, that's kind of what I do like that. Okay, let's move on to, uh, to these two trees and make a little bit more sense of them. I've been kind of waiting on purpose because this tree is just in some beautiful, beautiful light right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and try to capture that. Okay, so I'm gonna bring up this kind of rich green color that we had going and maybe dip into some of my medium liquid impasto to get things moving, get the paint moving, greased up a little bit, if you will. And let's go ahead and just try to find kind of the, the outline of this tree that we had right there as it comes down. Really nice shadow on that beautiful shrub that we just found. Part of it's in light right there. And it's kind of this cool mint color. And so what we do is kind of show contrast right there of light and shadow. That's kind of the whole idea there. And here we just blend a bit just finding, finding color relationships, light and shadow.
using a little more cobalt blue in this mixture as the as the shadows kind of change and shift and then I'm going to put the light on it and see what happens there okay lots of oranges and uh, green just beautiful warm color tree's got a lot of warmth to it and you just want to kind of squint your eyes and just see just see where the light is hitting it you know and it's mostly on this side of the tree so I want to keep my light and shadow consistent that's just what I'm trying to do here So now we have a nice contrast of light and shadow going on here, but I'm not getting too specific. I'm not counting any leaves quite yet. Not my job, not my job to be a leaf counter. So we're talking about greens and oftentimes with greens, it's trees. Don't paint trees, paint the light and shadow on the tree. I'm just dipping into a little more cad yellow light out here and just uh, increasing the brilliance of the color turning up the the color dial here a little bit with all these beautiful colors we are starting to in the high country here see some fall foliage changes already not too brilliantly but signs of it okay let's work on this tree which i've completely lost but that's okay we'll find it <laughs> again trying to accomplish that that simultaneous contrast we were talking about all right here we go this tree, this tree goes all the way up off the canvas. So the tree leaves on this, this tree kind of stick out and come into the other tree, which is very nice at various, at various points because it's such a, a huge tree. And the nice thing about that I didn't really do it by accident. I picked the composition on purpose. Is the light and shadow. Always trying to create contrast. The shadow of this tree on the light of the other. So we have shadow, light, shadow. That creates interest. That creates emotion. And then what we can do. Remember those color mixtures that I showed you earlier in the painting at the beginning. Those, those weren't you know, just for fun. Now we're going to actually put that into action. So I'm going to take some alizarin crimson and I'm going to put some kind of deep tree colors on the violet red side. At various places in that tree and down in here, just abstractly. See, and now it's nice. I've satisfied the viewer's eyes put green and red next to each other okay and then I'll put once I put the branches and the tree stumps and everything in these trees will make even more sense as we go but right now I'm not really focused on making it a tree if you can tell I'm really just reading colors values and temperatures and trying to get the right shape so that's really what it's all about at this point for me okay had to power up the battery there and paint a little bit and get going we're losing light I'm just working on kind of some of these these branches that are coming out from the forest and they're kind of this beautiful cool color don't want to overdo it we'll kind of go like this and then like that and then you can just kind of see hints of of that tree branches and such coming out and then there are some in light and some in shadow so you'd want to show some coming out in the light like that and catching some light right there again don't want to overdo it but it's there and beautiful tree trunk right in there let's try to nab it the bottom part is very cool top part is very light Okay, so here we go. It's coming down pretty big and thick like that. 
lots of gnarly tree branches coming off of it and then at the very top it's just catching some beautiful alpenglow light colors right there and I'm just using a palette knife going real quick you can take your time use a brush if you want either way doesn't matter okay so we tried to include some violets and some reds in here and one thing you could do here's kind of a little little suggestion I do it it's a little bit bold but but you don't have to but you can kind of take some remember what we said putting the opposing color in the shadows of green to satisfy the viewers eye for simultaneous contrast give the viewers eye what they want I could just take a little bit just a hint where there's a core dark area just a little bit and put it right there pure cad red just to hide it in the shadows but your eye can kind of see it and it picks it up with the green and it could be satisfactory now you don't have to go that bright like that you could even just do a then with alizarin crimson just a little bit darker you know right in here darker alizarin crimson in the shadows just kind of right there and see how that treats you I like to put some pure colors in the shadows like the impressionist used to there's like some cobalt blue right there pure cobalt blue just not even really mixing it just putting hints of that color in the shadows right there with a palette knife okay and then we could refine this area a little bit I think we lost a little bit there let's put a few strokes on there and see how that goes we can kind of work in that meadow as the alpenglow colors come they're getting softer and they're getting warmer out here in the meadow so I could easily just kind of go like this and put in some of those real beautiful alpenglow greens you know right there right there just to distinguish among the shadows because that's what's happening right now didn't start out that way and that's just a choice you know you can make a compositional choice up to you you don't have to you can leave it the way it was stick with your plan me I'm a light chaser I like to chase the light so if it changes I like to try to chase it that's all that means I just like to try to catch it as it changes that's all that means just in here in the foreground you put some more just kind of beautiful hints of those colors and then what I can do is just need a little more medium to kind of get it going in here is I can kind of work with that shadow again that I may have kind of lost a little bit in the foreground meadow and just bring this piece together a little bit I can go with uh, the same original color that I had more of a cerulean blue color greenish cerulean blue color with some red in it and I can go with that same color right here I'm just trying to find some of that shadow that I may have lost, you know, right there. There we go. A little bit better. Light and shadow, back and forth. That's what we do. We can kind of do something special here and just pick up just hints of this light coming in here in the forest among the shadows for interest sake. Right there. I hope you guys are having a good plein air week and out there painting, at least watching videos. I know last week, on a personal note, in the exciting life of Terry, I had, uh, I had stem cell injections for my low back. And so I had my own, I had my own cells re-injected back into my lower disc, my L4, L5 disc. I know on previous videos I've shared with you my back struggles from playing pro hockey in my younger years and uh, decided I needed to kind of try to do something about it. To try to fix it because it was getting real bad at times and i'll know in a few weeks if it worked i don't really know quite yet but i'll know in a few weeks so we'll see we'll see i'm praying i'm hoping kind of interesting tree stumps among the shadows back here just texturally just a little more interest right there you know and then we can choose 
to darken that if we want to. Okay, so let's take a close up look at uh, some of these brush strokes so you can see what kind of damage we have done here. Uh, seeing if we accomplished anything with our atmosphere curtains and veils. I think we did, you know, I think that uh, I like the shadows in here in the foreground. I like the, the warm colors next to the shadows. I think these trees, you know, there's some positives and negatives to these trees. Very tough to paint, you know, trees like that in a quick amount of time that are so big and massive. But we caught some nice, some nice light and shadow here that I like and some tree branches and palette knife strokes. And of course, take a look and you will see some violets, some alizarin crimson, some, some reds in there. There was that, that stroke of pure cad red light that I talked about to just kind of hide in there um, amongst the greens to satisfy the viewer's eyes with simultaneous contrast. We've got some mid-tone values and colors right here in these foothills and then off in the far John Wayne Mountain in the back. We just want to kind of get in, get out, keep that simple, just make it one one value and one shape. So that's kind of where we're at so far in the painting. And we'll keep trucking along here. Well, now I'm going to show you how I got to this point in the painting. And as I always say, um, a bad drawing is a guaranteed recipe for a bad painting. So I want to share with you the four P's of the drawing stage, my drawing method. I think you'll find it uh, very, very helpful. And I'm going to squeeze in our power tip here at the end. So stay tuned for that as well. All right, so I do what's called the four P's of the drawing stage. If you want to have a good, successful, beautiful plein air painting, it's crucial that you have a good drawing. The first thing I do is pieces. I divide the complex landscape up into three to five large manageable pieces. And I do that by squinting my eyes and just seeing the shapes. Piece number one is going to be this far off distant mountain range and it spans the whole width of the canvas. It's in the background. Piece number two is this kind of foothill, uh, I guess I would call it a foothill piece that comes down in through here through the middle of the canvas, the middle of the landscape. Piece number three, I'm going to put these two trees here in the right foreground that have these beautiful green shadows in them. I'm going to put them as one whole piece, okay? So you could just even just draw that in as one piece right there. Piece number four finally is going to be the foreground. All right, so next P is placement. Uh, every piece, every object in the painting should go within its boundary. It has a perimeter of where it should go and where it should live. And so the trees are over here, the mountains over here, and the meadow is here. This helps with composition. It helps you find a good roadmap. And so it, it can help you find your way as a compass in your painting. Proportion. You want to make sure that everything is proportionately sized according to what you're looking at with artistic license, of course. But, um, you know, I wouldn't want to make, for example, this tree bigger than this tree because this tree is huge. It takes up the whole side of this canvas. It's gonna go off the canvas probably. And so that's proportion. Perspective. If you have a chance to show perspective in your landscape planner oil painting, you want to do that. There's two ways you can show perspective. Linear perspective, and that's by roads or rivers or trails or railroad tracks. Um, the other way is through atmospheric perspective. And watch some of my other videos because that's through the use of color value and temperature changes. And so, in this particular painting, we're gonna be able to show some nice layering and atmospheric perspective. There's no roads in here or anything that's gonna help show linear perspective. So we're gonna rely on our colors for that. All right, let's go to the next stage. Here we go. All right, as promised, here is your power tip. When you change the value or the color of an existing puddle mixture, paint mixture, always save some of the existing puddle and work off of that. It creates harmony and it saves time. So for example, if you have a nice mixture going of some greenish gray that's on the warm side, for example, but you wanna make it cooler or you wanna make it darker and switch gears a little bit, rather than starting from scratch, always start and use that existing puddle, scoop up a little bit and start from that. It creates harmony and it saves time and use that to make your new paint color or value. All right, hope that helps you. Well, hey, thanks for joining me. That was a fun video. Hope you guys learned something. May God bless you guys this week. And uh, I'll see you up in the mountains or I'll see you on the patio Friday morning for our live YouTube show. And uh, click on this video right here, how to see and mix oil paint colors on plein air. If you haven't seen that video, super, super video involving some of the color mixing theory skills that we used today. And uh, so click play and I'll see you over there now. Like and subscribe. Thanks.